What's up everybody, Nagamaki Jeremy here with Nagamaki Shears. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at a very important and very common question, and that is, what size scissor should I buy? Let's take a closer look. So the very first question you're gonna be faced with when buying a new scissor or shear is, what size should I buy? And we're gonna be taking a look in this video, the whys and why nots, how length actually makes a difference from not only a mechanical point of view, but a haircutting point of view as well, and what results that will give you as a haircutter. All right, so jumping right in, we're gonna be taking a look at how scissors are actually measured. Now, typically you're gonna have scissors that are anywhere from five inches all the way up to seven inches. Of course, there's always gonna be the exception uh, four inch scissors all the way up to eight inches, but generally speaking, you're gonna be about five inches to seven inches. This is really important to know how scissors are measured because this can translate to you choosing the right size. So scissors are actually measured from the very tip to the very bottom of the handle, excluding the tang. So the tang isn't part of that measurement, it's the very end piece of the handle all the way to the tip. And so if you have a five and a half inch scissor, that is the measurement from the tip all the way to the bottom of the handle. So it doesn't really relate to blade size. And this is important to know because most people will make their decisions based on that. Say for instance, you're used to working with a five and a half inch scissor, you might be thinking there's no way I could go to a six inch or a six and a half inch scissor because that is a whole half inch to one inch longer in blade. When it's really not, again, we've talked about the measurements. The rule of thumb is if that you have a five and a half inch scissor and then you have a six inch scissor, as you can see here, the difference in blade is only a little more than a quarter of an inch. So if you were to actually go up in size a full inch from a five and a half to a six and a half, you're really only looking at half an inch difference. And so this is really important to know when you're buying a scissor is not to be so hung up on the size and that the half inch increments don't really translate directly to your blade size. The rule of thumb is always gonna be for every half inch, you're gonna get a quarter of an inch more blade. Hey guys, if you want a more behind the scenes look at some of our products in our factory in Japan, make sure and check us out on Instagram at Nagamaki Shears. So how does this actually translate to hair cutting? What we can see from decades of sharpening is that scissors that are five and a half inches and above are typically coming in and the base of the blades are still very, very sharp. And only three quarters of the actual blade need sharpening. And so what this evidence suggests is that the longer the blade, the less blade you're actually going to use, which makes sense because the blade starts to taper and it gets more slender towards the tip, giving you more maneuverability and also being further away from the body, just making it easier to use the front half of the scissor. Scissors that are five inches and below, you typically see when they come in for sharpening that the whole blade needs sharpening. And so this is a really interesting piece of evidence that we have is that the shorter the blade, the more of the blade you're actually gonna use, the longer the blade, the less blade you're actually gonna use, and you're only gonna use about three quarters of that entire blade once you're going from five and a half inches and up. So the next thing we're gonna be looking at is the mechanical point of view for how these scissors actually work and what the difference means for you in length. So a shorter scissor, we already talked about, you're gonna use more of the blade. And the reason for that is that the power source is actually the handle. Your hand creates the power and it goes to the fulcrum point, which is your center screw, and then it travels down the blade. And so the shorter the blade, the closer the blade is to the power in the fulcrum point, the more you're going to get out of it. So for a shorter scissor, the rules are, you're going to have more power, you're gonna have more efficiency, but where you are gaining more power and more efficiency, you're going to lose speed. Shorter scissors are actually gonna cut more cleanly as well because again, we just talked about the distance isn't as long from the tip of the blade to the fulcrum point, and so the power that is distributed out through the blade is actually more efficient. Also, when you're using a shorter blade, you're gonna use more of that blade, and so it's gonna wear more evenly, again, giving you more of an efficiency. The trade-off is always going to be with a shorter blade, you are getting more power, 
more clean cuts and more efficiency, but they're not gonna be as fast. You're not gonna be able to cover as much distance, and it's also gonna be a very hard and sharp cut as opposed to getting something a bit softer. So that translates to the next one we're gonna be looking at, which is our longer scissor. Again, we just talked about what the shorter scissor does, so the longer scissor is the exact opposite of that. You're going to have less power because it takes a longer distance from the blade to the fulcrum point to the power source, and you're also gonna have more pushing. And so that's gonna give you a softer cut. So as you're closing the scissor, it's going to start pushing the hair a little bit more as it loses power. This might be wanted in some cases where you want a softer look or a softer cut. Also, the thing that you're gaining from a longer scissor is you're going to be able to gain speed. So where you're giving up power and you're giving up efficiency, you are going to gain speed and softness with a longer scissor. Hey, real quick guys, if you're liking this video, let me tell you about nagamakishears.com. You can get any of the scissors and shears you see here in all of these videos. We have fast and easy fulfillment with more financing options than any other scissor company in North America. Also, it's worth noting that Afterpay has joined the party and they are now offering monthly financing as well. So that's pretty exciting, pretty cool. Also, while you're there, make sure and check out our newsletter, sign up for our newsletter. That's a place where we give out new information and most importantly, our discount codes. Um, so if there's ever a scissor or shear you have your eye on, you're looking for a discount, sign up for our newsletter. It's the only place that we give that out. So how is this gonna to translate to hair cutting? The way it translates to hair cutting is a smaller and shorter scissor is gonna be really great for sassoon and precision cutting. It's going to give you harder and sharper lines. It's gonna give you more power throughout the blade. So again, this is gonna serve you really well when cutting clean, controlled sections of wet hair, as well as point cutting. You're gonna get more power at the tip of your blade point cutting with a smaller scissor, because again, the distance is shorter from the fulcrum point and also the power source. A longer scissor is gonna be something that's really good for saving time. So if you're cutting, say, a new shape or an A-line bob, especially wet, you're gonna to wanna to use a longer scissor because you're gonna be able to cut that line faster, and also it's gonna give you a bit more of a softer shape, which can actually be to your advantage when cutting a shape. Also, it's worth noting that these are great for men's cutting, so if you're gonna be doing scissor over comb, you're gonna clear more distance, you're gonna get a softer cut as you're going through the section of hair, again, because you're losing that power and distribution. This is also the best scissor for getting into sections and removing weight deeply. Uh, if you're gonna take a section of hair and you're going to cut into it, this is the ideal scissor in length to have because it's going to penetrate and get into that section a lot more deep. And it's also going to give you a softer cut because of its mechanical advantages. You wouldn't wanna use a shorter scissor for that because again, this is gonna give you a harder cut and it's gonna chip into it and remove too much weight. So recapping everything we just went over, it's really important to get the right size scissor for what you're going to be doing to give you the desired results. And that's really what you should be looking at when buying a scissor and choosing a length is what results do you want? The shorter the scissor, the more blade you're gonna use, the more power you're gonna have, and the cleaner and sharper lines you're going to cut. So the longer scissor is gonna be really good for saving you time and giving you softer cuts. And the shorter scissor is gonna be very nice for giving you nice, clean, crisp lines and the most power and the most efficiency throughout the scissor. So then you might ask yourself, well, where does something in the middle fall? Exactly there, in the middle. With something, say, in between the two, you're gonna get the benefits of both worlds, where you're gonna give up a little bit in having a shorter scissor, you'll gain in the length, and where you're gonna give up a little bit in the length, you'll gain in the shorter scissor. And these are typically your workhorse scissors. So again, understanding how they're measured, how it translates to size of blade, and what these blades actually do mechanically is very important for you to get the desired results that you want. Hey guys, so if this content has been helpful for you, please consider subscribing and hitting the thumbs up button. It really does help us out a lot. So that's all we have for today's video. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you next month.